Today marks the first Sunday in the season of Lent, and as uh, Pastor Diana explained to our children so well, the Lenten season comes in 40 days preceding Easter, not including Sundays, so the Lent actually lasts about 46 days or so. Usually when we think of the Lent, we think of a time of reflection and a time to consider the life and, and the ministry of Jesus that led him to the cross and to the victory of the empty tomb. This 40-day period of Lent traditionally begins with a gospel, the gospel reading about Jesus, a 40-day period of temptation in the wilderness. It was the first stop for Jesus as he entered the ministry as Christ. It was also the first stop on our Lenten journey. Prior to, the, uh, uh, to this, this chapter, we read about how Jesus was baptized by, uh, you know, prior to this chapter, we read about J how Jesus was baptized by John. This baptism was not the same as others, that this baptism was his anointing ceremony, his commissioning, his inauguration as Christ. After this, his baptism, his holy, this Holy Spirit descended upon him, and God acknowledged Jesus as his son. That day, a son of Mary and Joseph became the son of God. So what was the first, uh, the order of business, uh, the, his uh, first order of business as Christ? Did he form an army and did he call his uh, uh, advisory council to, to, uh, to plan a, of attack on the Romans? No. So what did he do? He went on a retreat. Well, it's not a retreat like a, a beautiful retreat center like a mercy center where I spent the weekend, last weekend, and, and a centering prayer retreat. But it was like this. It was in the wilderness, uncultivated, un, uninhabited, and the inhospitable region. It is where his deeper journey began. So why wilderness? The wilderness wasn't a strange place for Israelites. Remember in Exodus how the Moses led Israelites out of Egypt into the wilderness. There, there they spent 40 years in, in wandering. And, so, and, and that is the place where God made the covenant with Israelites and gave them the Ten Commandments. And, and often prophets, the, the, those people, the leaders called by God to be, to be messengers of God, they retreated to the wilderness to, to hear God's voice. And remember King David, before he became the king, the king Saul was trying to kill David. So David had to escape into the wilderness so that he can, um, he can be safe. And this is where a lot of uh, psalms were written. Throughout the scriptures, the wilderness present, presents a place of preparation, a place of waiting for God's next move, a place of learning to trust in God's mercy. For 40 days and nights, Jesus remains in the wilderness without food, getting ready for what comes next. Number 40 is also a very interesting and special number in the Bible. Forty days and nights, and Noah and his family had to endure the flood, the rain on, the board, uh, uh, on board the, the ark. Um, and then for 40 days and nights, and Moses fasted on Mount Sinai as he inscribed the words of God's covenant for the Israelites. For 40 days and nights, Elijah, one of the prophets, fasted in the desert before receiving a new commission from God. 40, for 40 years, Israelites uh, the wandered in the wilderness in preparation for their arrival in the promised land. And for 40 days uh, the, of the season of Lent, as Christians participate in, the, in Jesus' ministry and follow his way toward the cross. The Bible tells us that Jesus spent 
40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, 40 days and 40 nights alone, out in the desert, out in the wild, away from civilization. I think a lot of people today have a hard time imagining what it would be like to spend 40 days and 40 nights alone, in, in just in general. But in the wilderness, of course, First, there is a matter of how one would survive. There is in Jesus Christ, in case, uh, Jesus case, uh, the whole temptation thing. Jesus didn't just give up food while he was in the wilderness. He gave up all the little distractions uh, there, that, that are part of everyday life. Perhaps Jesus needed 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness so that he could get away from, he could get away from all the distractions of life and examine his own heart. He needed to spend some time when, with the, the temptations, temptations that dwelled within him. If he ignored those temptations, then, then they, may, they might grow in the darkness and reveal themselves only after they had grown too strong. Not through this uh, wilderness test. Now, through this wilderness test, Jesus stands squarely in the long history of people of God, as even as his in encounter with the devil points ahead to the future as yet unfolding before him. The temptations started out, start out small, and one tiny little stone into a loaf of bread. And look at the, uh, the wilderness. Uh, the one thing plentiful in the wilderness is of stones, especially in the Palestine. So one tiny little stone into the loaf of bread. Now, who is that going to, going to care, really? And it, as if God would be concerned by such a trivial thing as that. But he recognizes temptation for what it was. One little tiny step in the wrong direction. Maybe it is not even a step that crossed the line, but it does get one closer to the line that should not be crossed. It doesn't cross the line, but it is a step toward, step in the wrong direction. And so Jesus, Jesus wanted nothing to do with it. And so he said, it takes more than, more than bread to stay alive. It takes a st steady stream of words from God's mouth. Verse 4, according to the message. Only by spending time in the wilderness and with his minds free from all distractions, including even food, was he able to identify this temptation. Only by experiencing the absolute solitude was he able to listen to what was going on in his own heart. Of course, there were even bigger temptations there, including the temptation to have all the kingdoms of the world bow before him. Jesus' purpose in life was nothing less than the complete transformation of the world. And with the power of God in his hand, there was a very easy way to achieve that transformation. The kingdom of God could be fully realized on earth in an instant if he could make, if we could make a small compromise and bow before Satan just once. It, it would become so much easier. Think about this. With the power, fame, and wealth, he can bring the instant change in the world. And this, is a comp this compromise is a justifiable but before making any haste actions, Jesus spent some time with his temptation to embrace the temptation, to acknowledge it, and bring it to, into the light. And he was able to recognize it for what it was and commit himself to a better way. So he said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And worship the Lord your God and serve God only. 
overcoming these temptations, Jesus was able to face the long journey as Christ to bring salvation to the world. To overcome temptations, he first faced, faced them. He didn't run away from it. He didn't ignore it. He went out into the world. He went to the wilderness in order to meet it, in order to meet and greet and even embrace his temptations. A Buddhist monk called Thich Nhat Hanh says that we should not fight the evil that is within us. He talks about the young man who needs to vent his anger, and so he goes into the woods alone and yells and screams and curses in order to get it out of his system. Or he finds a punching bag and then takes out his anger on the punching bag. Doing this, he said, fighting the evil within us in such a way does a little more than teach us to fight. It teaches us to fight with ourselves. It teaches us to fight with others. Instead, he says, it is better to acknowledge the evil that is within Acknowledge the temptation, acknowledge the anger, embrace it, cradle it like a mother would cradle her infant child. This, he said, is mindfulness. This is, uh, this is becoming aware of uh, the temptation. This is becoming aware of the evil within. Isn't that what Jesus went out to the wilderness to do? When you find the evil within, when you discover temptation, don't fight it. It's part of you. Fighting it is a fighting it, fighting with yourself. Don't beat yourself up over it. Remember, you want to cradle it like an infant child. Instead, with that temptation in your arms, transform it by the power of God. Ask God to help you transform that temptation into something good. Remember in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said not to resist evil. And likewise, uh, the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 12, do not repay evil for evil, overcome evil with good. We usually think of these uh, teachings in terms of evil that acts upon us from outside of us, but they also apply to the evil that comes within, from within. Do not resist it. Do not fight it. Instead, become aware of it. Embrace it. Nurture and love it so that it may be transformed into something good. If you fight what is within you, you are fighting yourself. Learn instead to treat yourself with compassion. Do not beat yourself up because you have a negative thoughts and emotions. As Thich Nhat says, if you don't know how to treat yourself with compassion, how can you treat others, other, another person with compassion? This is... What Jesus was doing those 40 days in the wilderness, his solitude was a simply opening his heart and mind so that he could really listen and take notice of what was going on within him. This is why the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to face temptation. This is why Jesus removed himself from all distractions, even the distraction of eating, he needed to spend time, he some, some time alone with his thoughts. And he needed to be aware of exactly what was going on within him. And he needed to acknowledge his own temptations so that those temptations could not grow in the darkness and overpower him. From ancient times, fasting, prayer, and meditation have been recognized as important disciplines of a spiritual life. And the church calendar even reflects this. And the 40 days of Lent are meant to reflect the 40 days of Jesus spent fasting in the wilderness. And this, we are also invited to the time of solitude. It is in that time in the wilderness of solitude that things like temptations are revealed. It is 
in that time of silence and stillness that we become acquainted with our dark side. In this a time of nothing, the time when our minds are silent, that we become aware of the negative thoughts and emotions within us. Naturally, this can make us uncomfortable. No wonder we do everything we can to fill those empty moments. However, filling those empty moments will make these negative thoughts and emotions go away. And these negative thoughts and emotions are still there, still be there, and just won't be aware of it. We won't be aware, aware of them. And they will continue to lurk in our minds. We can ignore them. We can ignore temptations. We can ignore the darkness within. But that won't make them go away. Better to take those 10 or 15 minutes of silence and learn to become aware of uh, what is going on within. Become aware of temptation. Acknowledge it, greet it, embrace it, and smile at it, and nurture it with love so that it may be transformed into something good and positive. So I encourage you to join us on Saturday at 11. Uh, we, we have a centering prayer sessions. It is exactly what we do, spend 20 minutes of silence and be communing with, with God and allowing God to speak to us. So if you have any questions, then please let me know. A lot of people give up something for Lent, and let me suggest that you give up something that is for you a distraction. But more importantly, let us remember to treat yourself with compassion, because that is how God, whose very nature is compassion, treats you. Embrace whatever you find within you with love, just as God embraces you with love. And let that love transform what is evil into what is good. It is how Jesus faced and overcame his temptations and how he began his deeper journey to the Christ cross. Amen.